Ed, can you talk about uh, the turn initiation? What happens at the start of the turn? Because I know the CSIA is talking about this. Uh, trying to get a good, a good, which is great, a good sort of clear, uh, concise story as to what is happening to the body at the start of the turn. So, I'm just going to get you guys to just try and experience some feelings through the feet. What happens as a result of that? and then leave it up to you as to what you do with that information. So I'm not telling you what's right or what's wrong, I'm just gonna give you what happens and the result, and then you can choose if you want that result or outcome on the snow or not. You can maybe understand when you get a certain outcome, why that's happened. Okay, so we're gonna start from the feet. We're gonna start with our boots undone. And, and for this one, just undo Drop two buckles when your booster strap, just leave the bottom one done up. Oh my god, I feel better already. <laughs> Great. Get your boots. I'm going to be talking for those who didn't come to the talk last night. Uh, about these three points of contact, or the tripod on the foot. So this is uh, a drawing of my left foot. The contact is the heel, wall of the pinky toe, wall of the big toe. Okay, so I haven't really included the toes. It's not to say that you don't use your toes, but the strength comes from these, these, these three points. Okay, and you join them together, you get a triangle, a tripod shape, which is a very stable structure. Now, base of support as a concept uh, helps us, if it's if the bigger the base of support, the more stable the structure on top is going to be. That makes sense to everyone? The smaller and narrow it is, the more tippy. Yeah. Second, in a structure, the, the, the higher the center of mass, the, the easier it is to topple, the lower it is, the more stable. So there's kind of two things straight away you can think about that'll make something more stable. So with our feet, the bigger the surface area we've got contact in the snow, okay. So the, the, the bigger the bigger surface area you have under the foot, then the more stability you have. Okay. So yes, if you include the toes a little bit, you'll get a bigger surface area, more stability. If you're standing, say, on the fourth metatarsal, not the fifth one, and now I join the tripod up, you've taken away this section here, and you could probably <coughs> say in my drawing that's probably 15% uh, less surface area and contact, so it's already a less stable base of support to stand on than the first one. So if you can find maybe when in the turn you really need that stability, because not all the time do we do we need it, okay, it's going to be a detriment, but when we maybe need that, we want this whole tripod. Yeah. So we're going to go for a ski uh, down to the right of the chairlift here. And I want you guys to just be aware of uh, these three points under both feet. I'm going to give you a point in the turn that I really want you to try and sense whether you stand on these three points. So if I'm coming around and finishing a turn to the right, this is down the hill, just after the fall line in this zone here, I want you guys to start sensing what your inside foot is doing on the snow. So it doesn't mean I don't want you to stand on it, I just want you to feel where are those uh, contact points? Are you standing on all of them? Does it feel the same when you go the other way? So three points after the fall line, so through the completion, feel for it, sense it, and then you'll know, stand on it, start the next turn. But that's how early we're gonna to start to feel it, then you're gonna give you some feedback. So let's do a good uh, warm up first.
notification when you when you go and try this again. To you're just getting feedback, so I don't want you to try and do anything. If you try and oh, I need to roll the ski on edge, I need to twist my leg, you're going to interfere with what is going to happen when you're standing at the top of the hill and you're just going down, no thinking. You're not going to get that information coming into your brain. So shut all that stuff off that I need to turn my legs, I need to do this. Just feel what your body does for balance and stability at that point in the turn. Where is the pressure? Where is it not? And, it, and, and I should say, it's not just pressure. Where is the contact point? Because there's always going to be more pressure because of the edge pushing up from the snow on the pinky toe heel side. So that's a given. But do you feel, is there a sense that you actually have your big toe or the ball of the big toe even just contacting? Is it lifted off? Is it pushed a little bit down? That's what I want you guys to try and feel. Don't try and do anything technically wise, just out of feedback and then let's That inside foot is preparing to do through the completion uh, of the turn is you could think about it gathering information from the snow about where your center of mass is. You know, more pressure on the pinky toe side, maybe you're actually a little bit inside. Too much on the big toe, maybe you're 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 already exiting that turn too soon. But it's gathering information and preparing to tense muscles to relax them. They want to feel more relaxed with that second pass. Yeah, yeah. yeah good. Yeah. Relaxed, you've got access to more movement, right? Straight away. So, so the foot is gathering information. If it can feel more surface area, the 200,000 plus receptors on the soles of your feet can tell your brain without you having to think, where am I? It's gone, oh, Tom center mass is, is just a little bit back. Maybe Let's get him a little bit further forward so he feels more over the whole foot. Sensed it. Bam. Next turn. He's on it already. Yep. So, <clears throat> we're going to try now just switching to the complete opposite. I want you guys to try and initiate a turn, not by sensing what the inside foot's doing, but by doing what most of us are taught at the start. Would you, would you agree you roll the ankle over, you make a... Yeah, a pronation type movement. Yep. So compare how that feels and how much information you can gather versus what we just did. So we'll do that till the till the speed. Just call this first kind of run as like gathering information, right? That's what, what we're trying to do here. I'm not telling you what is right or wrong. So this next section uh, down here, what I'd like you to try is if we take this concept of stability and increase with a larger base of support, bigger surface area. Here's my right foot now. Heel. Ball, the big toe ball, the pinky. 
if I feel that I'm standing on my heel, but even just a little forward, like Guy's saying he feels uh, he's finding that point kind of just in front of the, the heel bone here. Okay, so if he's feeling, say, here, is that right? Say more forwards, yeah, so. so oh, here. say even more forwards. Yeah, okay, yeah. so if Guy's reference point for, for sensing where his foot that's going to take his centre of mass is, if it's here, now we redraw his tripod. And the, the, thing, the thing is, as soon as you come forward here, you don't get to go out to this point. You now go straight forward to probably here. Yep. And now, I'd probably say that's 50% smaller than what the potential could be. Yep. So back, you know, half of the fall line, there's no harm in sensing. You don't, I'm not saying put pressure there. Sense here, sense here, sense there. Your body, your brain will take an aggregate of all those points and probably put you right bang in the middle because that's where the most stable point is. So I want you guys to now try and think, am I really feeling the ball of the big toe right here or is it here? And the pinky toe, am I right there or am I a little bit inside? And the heel, am I feeling the most back, very back corner of the heel or am I a little bit forward? And just see what feedback you get from feeling a bigger, bigger, bigger surface area. Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay. someone stands in the middle of it, what does it want to do? Ugh. And does it does the table have any muscles that kind of forcefully do that? Yeah. Gravity kind of does it. So as long as you start back here, feeling all these points stable first, all you need to do is start putting your center of mass there, and it's going to start wanting to topple for you. Now if you take a guy, for example, who's standing here already, then when, when he goes to stand on it, the table's already tipped, it's already fallen over, and so he's probably tensing other muscles to probably maybe even try and hold it from falling too early. Another way, another way to think about it. So we need another whole run now of you guys just feeling more of what's going on on both sides. Go up to the 